I think we talked a little bit about this last year in Algebra 2. Um, in rational functions, you have sometimes have areas of the function where the graph approaches but never reaches. These are, can be vertical or horizontal asymptotes. It is a line that is that not actually part of the graph, but it helps you see what is happening to the graph. It actually easy ways to find it. We've actually talked about vertical. Vertical are non-removable discontinuities. All right, so in like two chapters ago, I guess, when we did, maybe last chapter, when we did finding out if it was discontinuous, right? Some of the discontinuities you could remove and some you could not remove. And if you cannot remove it, then you create this guy right here, which is a vertical asymptote. The example they give us is right there. It is 5 over x plus 2 quantity squared. Well, what's going to cause a problem in this graph? Well, a problem is going to happen when x equals negative 2. That causes a problem. What is the problem? There's a 0 in my denominator if I have a negative 2. That is a problem. Can I get rid of the problem by factoring? No, I cannot. So that tells me I have this guy right here. I have a vertical asymptote. Horizontal is a little bit different. There's actually a shortcut for horizontal. And I honestly do not know if they give you this shortcut in your books, but I'm going to give it to you because that's how I do it. All right. Um, you can tell by your degrees if you're going to have a horizontal asymptote. All right. So look at these three particular functions. They look very, very similar, except what has changed? What has changed between these three functions? So in the numerator here, my, my degree is 2. In my numerator here, my degree is 1. In my numerator here, my degree is 3. All right? But what's the degree of the denominator for all of these? What's the degree? 2. All right? So for the first one, I have the same degree, right? 2 over 2. When that happens... You will have a horizontal asymptote. It'll be a y equals because it's going to be a horizontal line versus a vertical line. And it is just going to be your leading coefficients. So the 6 over, what's my number in front of this guy? A 1. So 6 over 1, or it's going to be at 6. You'll notice that's where this function actually is. Horizontal asymptotes will always appear based on your degrees. If the degrees are the same, you just use your coefficients of your highest exponent, your coefficient, 6 over 1, 6. If it looks like this, what is the degree of the numerator here? 1. What's the degree of the denominator? 2. So my numerator is smaller than my denominator. Your horizontal asymptote in this case will be 0. Always. It will always be your x-axis. y equals 0. And then this third guy, what's the numerator's degree? What's the denominator's degree? This does not exist. You do not have one. You do not have a horizontal asymptote there. Does not exist. So if the numerator is equal to the denominator, we're talking about degrees, degrees, then you use a ratio of the coefficients. If the numerator is smaller than the denominator, it will always be zero. And if the numerator is larger than the denominator, you will not have one. This is the shortcut for horizontal asymptotes. Find the domain of each function in the equations of the vertical and horizontal asymptotes, if any. Domain. So let's talk about domain. Can x be anything with no restrictions? Can x be anything? Yeah. Oh, okay, so um, I want x to be 3. You tell me. So I do have restrictions on my domain. My domain is x such that x does not equal 3, and it can be any other number you want it to be besides that. That would be my domain. Hopefully that looks familiar. Domain very often will help you then find your asymptotes, because in this case, that 3 is non-removable, meaning I cannot cancel it with anything in the numerator. All right? So that automatically tells me my vertical asymptote. My vertical asymptote then is going to be that non-removable discontinuity. At x equals 3, you're going to have this little dashed line that your graph will not touch but will get infinitely close to. Then let's look at horizontal. We're going to use our shortcut. What's my degree of the top? One. What's my degree of the bottom? So my, I do have one. It's going to be the coefficients. What's my coefficient of that highest x? 
What's the coefficient here? Yeah, it's 1 over. So y equals 1 is my horizontal. Let's do the next one. Do the next one. Domain. Do I have any restrictions on my domain here? The only restriction would be denominator equals zero. Is there ever a time in the real number world when that denominator will equal zero? So we can just find it out. 4x squared plus 1 equals zero. Subtract 1. 4x squared equals negative 1. x squared equals negative 1 fourth. What's my problem if I do this? Yeah, real number world. We're talking about real numbers. We're not talking about imaginary. So no, I have no restrictions on my domain here. Um, so my domain is actually all real numbers. All real numbers is my domain. I have no restrictions for this guy. Which means I do not have a vertical asymptote here. Vertical is where um, you have a a non-removable discontinuity. Well, it's a continuous function if my domain is all real numbers. So I don't have a vertical asymptote here. That does not mean, however, I don't have a horizontal one. Horizontal does not necessarily mean it's not part of the domain because that's talking about y's, not x's, okay? So let's talk about horizontal then. What's my denominator of my top? I mean, my degree of my top. Degree of the denominator. Same. So my horizontal is going to be the coefficient. So is my coefficient on top? Eight, Over. Four. Y equals 2 is my horizontal. Determine vertical and horizontal asymptotes and intercepts, then graph the function. All right? So they want us to sketch this graph. All right? So let's do our, um, let's just look at the, the function first. So we have 3x squared minus 3 over x squared minus 9. I actually start with intercepts typically. So like my y-intercepts is when I plug in a 0. We did this in the last section. So plug in a 0. 3 times 0 squared minus 3 over 0 squared minus 9. I'm going to get negative 3 over 9, 1 third. So my y-intercept is when x is 0 and y is 1 third. Okay? So far, so good. X-intercept, that is when Y is 0. Another way to say that is when the numerator is 0. So then I just set it equal to 0. Add 3. Divide by 3. What happens when I square root both sides? I get 1 and negative 1. So I have two X-intercepts at 1 and at negative 1. Okay? Everybody see that? So I take my original function. Zeros and the x's are my y-intercepts. The numerator equal to zero is my x-intercept. All right? And then they want me to find my asymptotes. So asymptote, so vertical. Vertical, I need to factor. So I'm going to take a 3 out of the top and have x squared. Uh, actually, it's going to factor to x plus 1, x minus 1. Denominator is going to be x plus 3, x minus 3. What are my problems in the denominator? Where are my problems? They happen two places. At x equals 3 and x equals negative 3. Are either of those removable? Can I cancel either one of those? So those are both going to be vertical asymptotes. And then horizontal. We're going to do our shortcut. Look back up here. What are my degrees? Same, numerator bigger, denominator bigger? Same. Same. So I'm just going to put 3 over 1. Y equals 3. All right. And then we're going to graph it. Wow. So my horizontal asymptote, I'm actually, actually I'm going to cut this a little bit so it's not quite as big. So I can do more, you can see it better. All right, so let's do that. All right. Horizontal. Horizontal is at three. When you draw the asymptote, it's horizontal, meaning it goes this direction. And you dash it because you indicate that is not actually part of your graph. It's just to help you with the graph. Okay. Vertical, we're working our way up. Those happen at 3 and at negative 3. 
So once again, you're gonna go vertically to three and negative three and do a dashed line here as well. All right, for both of those. Then we can graph our intercepts, okay? Our intercepts. Um, our x-intercepts, that's where it crosses the x-axis. That happens at one and at negative one, all right? Our y-intercept happens at positive one-third. And so that's about right here. So I can actually see what the middle part of this graph is gonna look like. It's gonna look like a parabola. Can't you tell? Can you tell it's gonna look like a parabola? So I know the middle of this graph is gonna do something like this. I'm gonna get infinitely close to those blue lines and never touch them. What I need to figure out is what happens on the other side. This is a function, so it will only be, on this side, it will only be either up here or down here. It can't be both or else it wouldn't be a function. Remember vertical line test? Can't go through it twice. Same thing over here. So really just pick a point, negative four, and plug it in and see where you are. I know also that it cannot be right here. Why can't it be right here? Well, it's not gonna go over him, and we know it doesn't cross my x-axis again, right? Or else I would have other zeros. So it either has to be down here, where it never crosses, or up here, all right? Logic would tell me that if this is what it's approaching, it's gonna be up here, because if it were down here, it would have to cross the x-axis again to approach that green line but we can test it. Pick negative four, plug it in, all right? Negative four squared is gonna be 16. Three times 16 minus three, is that gonna be positive or negative? This is 48 minus three, right? That's 45. Then four squared, 16 minus nine. Right, so this is gonna be up here in the positive. So this graph right here, he's gonna be up here. By the way, if I pick positive four, since they were all squared, it's actually gonna mirror it over here. It's gonna mirror. It's a sketch, so I'm not looking for perfection on how you sketch it. I'm just looking for, do you know where in the quadrant it goes? And you can do that by testing a point. guy right here, you'll notice that they factored it. See these factors? One was removable, one was not. What does that mean? Well, it was at C, wherever C is. Let's say, we'll just make this up for the point. Of, let's say C is right here. C was not removable, so we got a vertical asymptote here, okay? But when we have a removable, like we have an A, it creates this hole in the graph. And so instead of having a line there, a dashed line, you're gonna have an actual hole in the graph. And it's just gonna go straight to that hole, it's gonna jump over and it's gonna keep going. And there's actually a way to figure out exactly where the hole is, by the way. So let's say we took out an A. A is what our problem is. X equals A is where our hole is gonna happen. If you cancel it out like it did here and then plug A back into this piece, it will give you the y value of your hole, even though there isn't actually a y value, but it'll tell you where your hole is exactly on the graph. That will give you your x, y of your hole. So we're gonna do one of those. Look at example five. All right. And the more you do these, the easier they will get. So, for this one, determine any vertical and horizontal asymptotes, holes, and intercepts, then graph the function and state the domain. So when I do these, again, I start with the things that don't require the factoring, okay? So some things that don't require factoring is my y-intercept. I just plug a zero in for all of these. Zero squared minus four over zero squared minus two times zero minus eight. So I end up with negative four over negative eight. What is my y-intercept? Yeah, it's one half. Everybody see that? Something else that doesn't require factoring is my horizontal asymptote, right? Horizontal asymptote. So my horizontal asymptote, 
I look at my numerator and denominator degrees. What are they? X squared and X squared. So what are my coefficients? One and one. So my horizontal is gonna happen at Y equals one. Pretty much everything else I'm gonna need to factor this guy, all right? So at this point, I'm gonna factor. So I'm gonna factor my X squared minus four and I'm gonna factor my x squared minus two x minus eight. X squared minus four is a special case. X plus two, x minus two. What are my factors of eight that subtract to give me two? Factors of eight that subtract to give me two. Four, two. Yeah, and specifically I want a <coughs> negative four and a positive two. So that is my factoring. Everybody see that? Okay. All right, and so at this point, I want to determine my holes. Do either of those cancel out? The x plus two will cancel out. So I'm gonna have a hole where? Where would that discontinuity be if I crossed out x plus two? It's gonna be at negative two. That's gonna be a hole, all right? So then the vertical asymptote will happen where it doesn't cancel out. Which one doesn't cancel out? Again, talking about the denominator. Four, and it's gonna be x minus four, so what are we gonna use there? Positive four, right? Now, this is actually where I decide my x, my, um, x intercept. Because if you do it at the beginning, then you'll say, oh, I have two x intercepts, one at negative two and one at positive two. That's where my numerator is zero. But what happens? At negative two, I have a problem. It's actually a hole. It's not gonna cross anything. It's a hole in the graph. So if you do it in this order, you will have already decided if it's a hole or not. And if it's not a hole and it makes the numerator zero, then it's an x-intercept. And so at this point, I'll say, okay, well, my x-intercept then is where the leftover of my numerator is zero. Where is my numerator zero that's left? Well, it's at positive two, at positive two. Does everybody see that? Now, for this hole, I wanna come back to this guy right here for just a second. For this guy right here, I can take this negative two and I can plug it into what's left over. Negative two minus two over negative two minus four. I get negative four over negative six, so I get positive two thirds. That's actually where that y value is gonna happen for that hole. At negative two, positive two thirds. All right, so I'm gonna graph all of these. I'm gonna graph my y-intercept. I'm actually zero, one half, that's right here, okay? My horizontal asymptote, that's horizontal at one. All right, so at positive one, we're gonna have a dashed line. My hole, my hole happens at negative two, positive two thirds. So negative two, positive two thirds. I'm gonna put a hole there, all right? My vertical asymptote happens at positive four. So I'm gonna go over here at positive four, and I'm gonna draw a vertical asymptote there. All right? And then my x-intercept happens at two, zero, right there. I actually can already see what's happening below that graph, can I? Like you can kind of tell that it's gonna do this, it's gonna jump over that hole, it's gonna do this, and it's already headed down here. All right, so you can already see what's happening here, right? We just have to figure out what happens on the other side. It can only be on top or on bottom. It can't be both because of the vertical line test, okay? So I can just pick a point, five, right? Now here's my logic skills. I'm going to guess it's gonna be up here because it's approaching this purple line. Why do I think it's not down here? Why would I assume it's not down here? What would have to happen if it were down here? It would have to start at the bottom. We talked about this yesterday, something very logical. It would have to be approaching this red line and it would have to be approaching this purple line. What would it have to do to approach the red line and the purple line? It would have to cross over this guy. That's an important number. What are those? Those are our zeros or our x-intercepts. Do we have an x-intercept over here? 
No, we already found our x-intercept. We only have one x-intercept. It does not cross the x-axis again. So you can assume it's gonna be up here and you can pick a point and test if you wanna just make sure, all right? But because I've already done my x-intercepts, I'm pretty sure this graph's gonna do something like that. Because if not, it would have had to cross over here again and it would have shown up in my x-intercepts. 